My knowledge matters. Your mother also was very important because she did not treat you as a, a victim or something that needs to be helped. So how important was your mother to your success? Took me to a neurologist who recommended uh, two speech therapy teachers that worked out of a small house. So I got very good early education. She had a very good sense of how much to kind of push me. She also taught me to read when I was age eight. I could not read by age eight. I was fully verbal by four. And uh, she just taught me to read out loud phonics. And we read a book like The Wizard of Oz, a book that would be fun to read. That's our generation's Harry Potter. And she just taught me to sound out my words because sight words didn't work for me. I had great elementary school teachers in a small school. When I was a bad high school student. I wasn't interested until my science teacher got me interested in studying so I could become a scientist. So I want to really credit my mother and some very good mentors and teachers that I had. Now, a little bit um, an obvious question. Where did you learn to dress so classy and uniquely? I love your style. Well, it kind of came gradually. I always liked Western. And then um, I just started kind of wearing these shirts and I go, well, I'm just going to wear them all the time then. And I have like, this is my dress version right now. It's very cold below zero here right now. And I've got electric heat. It's not worked very well. I've got three shirts on under this because I'm right by a cold sliding glass door right now that's covered up with a curtain. Um, so there's three shirts under this. Um, the electric heating in my house has not worked very well. And so. You are also your trajectory of your life, and especially also due to also your mother, of course, your family, is, you know, in three words, I would say exploration and exposure, which really ultimately turned into the curiosity and really forged the, the innate ability that you had, but somehow was disregarded in school. Would you agree with this uh, assessment? I don't know. You see, I think you're a very verbal person. You see, everything I think about is a picture. And one of the things that helped me in my work with cattle when I first started is I looked at what cattle were seeing, going to a shoot, maybe to be vaccinated or even at the meat plant, and um, they'd stop at a shadow. They'd stop at a reflection. They'd stop at a piece of chain hanging down, a shirt hung on a fence, little things we tend to not notice. You see, I'm being an extreme visual thinker. In fact, I talk about visual thinking in my book, um, Visual Thinking, Hidden Gifts of People Who Think in Pictures, Patterns, and Abstractions. Now, one of the problems with visual thinkers, cannot do abstract math. I have to have a picture graphics file in order to remember something. Now, the interesting thing is, in all my equipment work, and I have a lot of equipment still out in the industry, even though a lot of it I developed 30 years ago, it's still out there in the industry. Uh, some of the people who invented some stuff for me and built it were probably autistic. Brilliant metal workers that just could invent machines. And this is something I'm very concerned right now is these people are retiring out. Uh, I just hope our power plant doesn't fail. My house would freeze solid. And the visual thinkers are the uh, kind of people that are going to keep the lights on, keep the waterworks going, and they're retiring out. So that's another big thing I've been really talking about. And I've talked to a lot of different industries and that kind of autistic uh, weird guy in the shop that they really need is retiring out and not getting replaced. That's why knowledge matters. Make your life a masterpiece. Visit now programs dot d-ykm.com